Hello and welcome to the hybrid panel. So for those of you who've experimented with virtual or perhaps you just want to go back to normal, whatever that means, I've brought in three of my friends and experts. Christopher Ludwig from Ultima Media, welcome. Uh, Connor from Spark Network, I'm never gonna be able to pronounce your surname, Connor, so I'm not even gonna attempt it. And Joanna from VAB uh, Events. Uh, all three of my panel members have already worked on a hybrid event in some form or other, and also have looked at things like live streaming in the past. So I thought it'd be really interesting to explore what this world might look like as we move into next year. So Connor, I'm gonna start with you. Um, I just want to find out, first of all, just tell us a little bit about what Spark Network does. Thanks, Ralph. Great to be here with you, Christopher and Joanna too. Um, Look, in, in, in a nutshell, Spark uh, Network creates online content, so podcasts, videos, and editorial, and our own in-house events. So um, we also Sparkify third-party events. So if you have an event that needs a bit of out-of-the-box put in it, uh, that's one of the things that we're, we're great at. Um, I think in terms of our own content and events, we support and grow communities that are driving positive change through disruption, and we're very much about bringing very diverse types of people together and in the future as we evolve to bring different ind industries together to help create, I suppose, a melting pot of ideas that uh, are, leads to progress. Well, we've made a little showreel for you, Connor, so let's take a look. Two things now all I care about. Well, well three. One is passion and purpose. There's no passion and no purpose. I don't touch it. I can't be around it. From now on, I'm living for my legacy and not my resume. Three missions, I believe, on the, uh, the space shuttle mission, uh, 84, 88, and 1990, right? And can you tell us a little bit about what you were doing, what the purpose of the mission, and, and what your, the experience was like being in space? I'm Nick Harcourt, and I got three of my very good friends here. Miko, I got my mate Camilo Lara, who is also known as Mexican Institute of Sound and he's in Mexico City. And then I've got Fran Healy from the band Travis. Chris is gonna play some songs and then Nick's gonna ask him some questions. And you'll have the chance to actually, in, in one of the breakouts, you'll be able to talk to Chris and spend time with him. We see the music move you as you lay your burden down. We feel the music grip you as your heart is soaked in sound. Welcome to Stone Park Cafe here in Brooklyn. I think you're going to enjoy this. It's definitely a bartender's cocktail. Slancha to Connor and Angela and Slancha to all of you. I hope you've successfully made your own perfect Sasserac. A couple of things caught my eye. One was the concept of everybody being sent something before the event. So these are quite, I think, relatively high value individuals, however you want to term that, but people that, that require higher touch that perhaps are quite influential. You sent them a box uh, and they were able to make a cocktail with a bartender that we streamed live from a Brooklyn bar. Just tell us a little bit about what, where did that idea come from and why did you do it? Well, look, I think there's, and most of us would agree that there are a number of things that are fundamental to any event. One is education or the content. Another is the networking, the connecting or the deal making. And another is the vibe, the personality of the event. And I think one of the problems that the digital space has thrown at us is to how to bring some of the personality and some of the connectivity between people to an event. And one of the fun ideas that we came up with was, as you said, sending out a Sazerac box or a Sazerac kit from you know all of the ingredients that were necessary to a really cool glass and the mixer um, so that people could first you know, sort of get a bit of a wow factor um, in advance of the event and then connecting on event day with a mixologist um, who was kind enough to tune in from New York and take us through how that was built. The idea, I suppose, comes from the fact that um, Spark Network is actually a pandemic pivot. In, in March, we were on our way to the States 
to promote our first event, which is due to take place in October in New Orleans, uh, uh, you know, an in-person event. So it was a nod to that, both in terms of sort of showing people what we were going to do and bringing people together. It leads to great chat. It leads to great, you know, it leads to a, to a following in a sense. It helps build a bit of a, a bit of a tribe when you throw in something personal like that. Excellent. Well, I, you've done some other amazing things, which we'll touch on slightly later on. But I just want to bring Joanna into the conversation. VAB events, uh, we work together on in-house recruitment expo. Just tell us a little bit about what that was before the lockdown and then what it became. And also your take on hybrid, because you had a media studio for this event. Yeah, we we you know we ran our London show in February um, each year for the last six years. Um, at Olympia um, and uh, drawing a um, thousand people, a thousand visitors over the two days. It, essentially, it's a vibrant, uh, busy event with exhibitors and sponsors. Um, we were able to say hi to each other, to um, hug each other and, um, you know, high five each other and all those amazing things you can you can do in a normal circumstances. I wanted to ask you about hybrid because right from the start you were adamant you were going to have a host, you were going to have a studio. Why, for example, didn't you do everything virtually like we're doing it now? What was the thought process? It all led back to the thinking of let's see if we can deliver this in a TV show format. That was the I think the pivotal decision and. Once that decision was made, it was, we are going to need a media studio to deliver all the nuts and bolts of what we want to include in, in the VE. So we wanted a host, we wanted a pre presenter to anchor the broadcast. We wanted polls, we wanted interviews, we wanted to include the speakers, obviously the content, um, but we needed to schedule that smartly through the day. And um, so you needed a space that you could, you know, do that in. And the it's obvious to us was that you'd we'd need a media studio because we had a cameraman in the, or would need a cameraman to broadcast in the space to film our host. Um, the rest of the team would need to um, be able to manage all the virtual aspects of the event. So that's the sponsors and the visitors. Uh, and also we needed to engage with our remote digital production team, uh, you. I'll give you a wave, yeah. <laughs> so we needed to do that. And well, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna talk about communication in, in, in a second, but I do no, just want to bring... To off. No, no, I'm not gonna tell you off at all, no, but we're gonna talk about some of the issues in, in running a hybrid, but let me bring Chris in first. Thanks very much, Joanna. Um, so Chris, first of all, welcome. I think you, uh, I don't know, Connor, Connor's, events are, are pretty out there and cool as well. But I, you know, you run some very interesting events, things like car design dialogues, where you're going into the literally the design studio, you're looking at concept cars from some of the biggest names in the industry. Um, how have things changed for you during this past six months to a year? Yeah, well, first, Thanks, Ralph. And, and again, thanks. Great to be on, on a panel here. And, and it's so interesting to hear what the others were saying. I mean, it's interesting you, you, you raise car design dialogues because, in fact, that is, is itself a pandemic disruption innovation. Um, if we take car design news, which is one of the automotive brands that, that we run here at Ultima Media, um, our, our model, um, similar to Connor, obviously, we have our own editorial uh, across print, digital, podcast, etc. Our event business was largely it was like centered around the global motor show circuit. So your Geneva's, your LA's, your Detroit's, et cetera, um, networking, sometimes conferences in and around them. So the product, if you like, was already on display. That's kind of the nature of the show and the world comes to it. Um, obviously, um, I mean, we can have a whole separate conversation about uh, motor shows and, and what might happen with them in the future, but clearly they were severely disrupted and, and, and our ability to you know, to deliver anything like that with it. Um, we pivoted pretty quickly to things like live stream webinars where we were kind of broadcasting weekly and in a kind of very much do it your do it at home, do it yourself kind of manner. But when we got to the concept of a digital event specifically for car design news, um, we did feel we needed to offer our audience more. The the design community 
without uh, having to state the obvious cares a lot about about the visuals about the product itself um, a lot of that is created digitally but the, the you know feeling touching seeing the product is still so important we still wanted to deliver that even in a, in a digital format and so we we actually created the design dialogue format in which we we we, we, we follow if you like virtually the the car makers into their studio where they'll do live design reviews of the product themselves or in fact we interview them in the context of uh, the studio with the concepts nearby just being able in some cases to look and touch and feel and point. Welcome back to Car Design Dialogues. Uh, my name is James McLaughlin and I'm the editor of Car Design News. Mm -hmm. um, you can see on the car behind here that uh, you know on the rear we have the vertical lights um, and then it, it kind of crosses over and, and drops down and on the front you can see the Thor's hammer on the front of the car. So this is the interior of the 360C concept. It's actually a bed. <laughs> yeah, I, was, I, I didn't know that uh, Car Design Dialogues was actually a, a format that you've created because mm. of the pandemic. That's fascinating. I mean, you're sat there with a green screen um, behind you. Uh, what has been your experience of, I mean, you also built a small media uh, presenter studio in your office. What's that experience been like? Yeah, and as I sort of mentioned, so when we when, when we were disrupted, like everyone back in March, and we we kind of quickly um, jumped on this sort of almost like a weekly schedule of webinars and live streams and stuff. And if I look back at those early ones, I mean, they were really grainy with uh, a webcam off my laptop, which you know, it's quite damaged if I'm honest. And but but it was what we had and what we were using. My bookshelf in the back in the background, like every pretentious journalist in the world and stuff like that. So you know that that served its purpose in March and April. Um, and I don't think we got too many complaints for it. But we did want to move forward. Now I think what was previously said about having a TV studio is 100% is great, and I'm envious of that. But I think for us, the starting point wasn't necessarily to kind of invest at that level for us, because for us, it was a little bit more our audience wants more of our of, of our audience, of, our, of, our, of the car makers, of the products. And so we probably wanted to focus a little bit more on what we're presenting from their side. However, we needed to up the quality of, of what we were doing. And so, you know, uh, hope you don't mind me saying, I don't think you will. Um, thanks to some of your help, Ralph, we were able to, um, you know, to construct a pretty, pretty simple but effective little little studio with much better higher webcam, with a good green screen, no one understanding how the, the key technology works with the light and mic. And, and you know, it, it didn't take much. I mean, it was a kind of a couple hundred quid pounds, we convert that to dollar, right? Seven, seven eight hundred dollar um, uh, kind of investment and do a few of those where at least we can get our, get our um, our staff doing things in a way that looks more presentable. And and yeah, this is a little little shout out behind me to the car design dialogue event happening, um, you know, in December as well, and a series coming up next year. Uh, we do want to 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 look at, at other opportunities for TV studios, whether that's working with external partners to do that, or maybe even in future building more of our own. But you know, again, this this as another version of do it do it yourself worked really well for us and and took us to that to that next level. I think. Fantastic. Well, I'm going to bring uh, everybody in here because I'm going to ask the question about hybrid. That's the name of this panel. So uh, maybe I'll start with you, Connor. What does hybrid really mean to you? Because it's kind of all things to all all men, really, isn't it? It is, Ralph. And you know what? I I I hope I give an answer that's not too broad. I mean, hybrid for me starts with the education side of things and the human side. So we won't do an event that is just about the topic at hand. It will involve other things that we're passionate about, whether that's food, art, music, sport, whatever it is. So there's an element of hybrid there. I think then there's a tangible experience. We talked briefly about the cocktail experience. Obviously the cocktail kit, you can't do it at every event, uh, but you can do things that are simple and bring people uh, together. We have an event next week where we're doing a wine tasting. It's a hell of a lot easier. We can do it with more people. Um, bring in a sommelier to discuss the wine is something we're doing. But you can do something as simple as 
um, getting people to engage with the local restaurants and order from those restaurants that are actually struggling right now during break time. So that's something that we've done uh, in the past. It, it really just helps kind of create a connection between you know the virtual life uh, and the real life. Well, um, and by the way, I love some of the the things that you've done because you almost deliberately go against the grain. Um, so, I mean, I've I've been in conversations at Spark events where it's been about, uh, for instance, I remember a guy from Hawaii talking about the 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 I guess the native people, the you know the the yeah. impact of tourism, things like that, alongside something about fintech. And um, I think that was the one with the cocktail as well. So you deliberately kind of mix stuff up to get people thinking. It, it, it is, and, and, and you know, it's uh, so. Our first event, our first recent event, was uh, about um, asset management and financial advice. But at the very heart of that was our LA DJ tastemaker, a New York City chef, um, a UK-based guru, guru on. Uh, the power of clarity of mind, and an American financial advisor slash crypto nut who's also a powerhouse for so social justice. So again, there's you people. We all have fatigue. Um, we all need to be entertained and challenged, and I suppose pushed out of our comfort zone a little bit. So you know, but that element of hybrid for us, where you bring an audience to talk and think about a specific topic, but where they're inspired by uh, something completely different, um, I think is fundamental for us. I mean, we, and this sort of comes to the next step of hybrid for us where we've started to introduce live performances to, um, to the event. Uh, we just had Chris Pierce, who's an up and coming artist. In fact, he's a musician's musician, probably somebody that most of us hadn't heard of or haven't heard of. And when you hear him, singing his American Silence for the first time broadcast from Hotel Cafe in LA, that's moving, you know? So that, 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 that element of hybrid where you're bringing something live uh, to an event, um, something different to an event, I think is, you know, again, it's at the heart of what we do. It's fundamental to our DNA. Uh, Joanna, you talked about this TV-like experience. What was the reaction to what we you were doing? And I know you're planning events. I think from February onwards, are you are you going with the same kind of hybrid, or are you going to push push a little bit more? Are you doing other things? We are pushing it a little bit more. Um, I mean, that was a one-day event uh, with a replay day, uh, networking for visitors. Um, the next one's going to be two days um, and another replay day. Um, but the reaction, just going back to firstly the reaction to the event, uh, the day after the event, we were receiving emails from attendees saying, wow, that was really innovative and, um, you know, just really engaging. All the speakers were great. Um, and for, for London, um, you know, we are going to a bigger media studio. It's interesting because for us on the AV side or anybody who's kind of worked on TV programs, you are all becoming more more like a TV production. Yeah. So you've got a floor manager. Communication is really important. The person who's telling you to be quiet, who's actually got access to the environment. All of these things are quite normal uh, yeah. when you're when you're filming. Um, but that's a long way from kind of an in-person event where, frankly, the guy in the black T-shirt was just at the back of the room and you went and spoke to him at the break and said, you know, can you put this slide on, mate? Yeah, thank you. Uh, suddenly, it's kind of a, it's a change, isn't it? You're becoming a bit more of a media company than perhaps yeah, you were. Yeah, we give it more 360, definitely. Mm. Content, drawing visitors back through the year. What does hybrid mean? It, it's a bridge. You know, I haven't looked up the absolute definition of hybrid, but for me, it's a bridge between VE, virtual events, and live events. But it's an exciting time. I think it's exciting. I think it's, um, you know, perhaps once in a lifetime. It's happened out of a, a time that perhaps we wouldn't have wanted. We'd all love to just have it on rolling on and our events and everything going as, as, as you know, how it was. But every... Um, industry goes through a moment of change and transition, and I think it's it was our time, and yeah. 
you know, we've just got to grasp the opportunity, rise to the challenge. Fantastic. I mean, great, great words there, I think, for everybody watching. Uh, Christopher, I wanted to ask you, when you think of hybrid, I mean, you were doing live streaming before um, actually this happened. You've told us that you've created this new format. What does hybrid mean to you and what does the future look like? Yeah, I mean, I agree wholeheartedly with with Joanna and, and uh, what Connor said as well. I mean, certainly from the point of view of always on, always connected, which, you know, is, is a logo or slogan that we've stolen, if you like, and using for our, our um, the, the sort of spotlight pages, we're calling it, which brings together the digital event on demand content together with other digital um, editions, podcasts, other things that we're doing um, in, into one place. So, so that sort of focus on the hub is for us really, really essential. Um, I think for us previously, although, as you mentioned, we were doing live stream, we, 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 we broadcasted um, a number of our logistics, automotive logistics conferences from around the world. Um, and, and, you know, I think they looked good. It was a nice thing to do. Um, so we can maybe call ourselves a little bit ahead of the, uh, ahead of our time. But we, we lacked a real, I would say, digital strategy to go with that in terms of how we were using the content afterwards and how we were potentially breaking it up. You know, it was more like just putting it out there or maybe having a link somewhere and things. And, and it wasn't quite as joined up to the other things we were doing. And I think that's really the, the kind of key thing for us. We're in immediate business. We're in kind of two businesses which were severely disrupted even before the, the pandemic. So, you know, obviously we had print products which were on the decline. We had, you know, obviously struggling to convert to digital media in some parts of our business. Uh, and the automotive industry has its own uh, disruptions to deal with. Events were for us the kind of lifeline for for many years. They were the thing that we, we turned to and we kind of, you know, had, were our bread and butter. And I think, you know, I see those still playing a key role in the future, but we, we were probably too much drop into a market, you know, put on an event and sort of leave. Um, although we had some content around it, it definitely wasn't all speaking to the audience and communities there. It wasn't building them up and, and sustaining that in a way that now this virtual format, you know, for forcing us to do not just with our events, but also with our other content. We're making them all speak to one another, reflect in one another, build off and things like that. And in the future, regardless of what format exactly we use for hybrid, because we can see a number of different ways for that, I think that aspect will and needs to continue. So we're creating kind of what research reports that are then influencing our events or coming out of our events and things like that. Obviously articles, interviews, TV-like programs and other things like that. Um, um, so I, to, to me, that's probably the key bit that we'll take going forward in terms of the actual format. Naturally, we'll we'll want to to use the kind of TV stuff that we've learned, if you like, in terms of how we've we've done it, instead of just maybe broadcasting the stage. Um, I think there's also scope, of course, to use the kind of networking tools which come from the digital side. You know, some of the some of the kind of matchmaking aspects, some of the ways to organize in, in meetings, which we didn't have in our physical events before. We just let it happen organically, um, partly because we were probably afraid or didn't understand the technology to introduce in. So bringing aspects like that in um, will be interesting. And I love the stuff that, that, that Connor's doing. I mean, I would love to be able to, to add more elements of that, of, of bringing stuff of that to life alongside um, the business conversations that we're having. Because our, our live events depended on an experience, you know, a great dinner, a great sort of speaker coming in a while, some memory that, that lasted. And, and we, we want that equally to reverberate in the digital space and in the hybrid space as we go for, for, forward. Fantastic. Well, um, that's all we've got time for on this panel. I'd like to, first of all, I'd like to just summarize some of the things you said. So if you want to talk to Christopher, Connor or Joanna, they are all registered on the Brella platform. So you can contact them uh, through that. Um, I think there's been some, I mean, Joanna, just some of your words there about it being our time to innovate, to change, to try something new. And I guess not to be afraid of it because you've you've got to change like that that's got to happen if you want to survive. I thought was really interesting, uh, Christopher. I think your points and also, you know that that new format for me when I saw. I mean, I'll I'll, I'll name the brand. Uh, you were interviewing Volvo in their design studio, and it was just a whole other level of experience. I think you hit the nail on the head there. I I remember things like that. And equally with Connor, I remember the cocktail, funnily enough. I mean, partly we were we were trying to get that live streaming work and different camera angles of the of the lady in Brooklyn. 
but also it was kind of cool. I will point out he didn't send me a box, so I still don't know how to make a Sazerac. You know, when when I come to Spain, you can show me. Um, but you also had, I mean, one thing we didn't even talk about because we didn't have time. You you managed to get an astronaut to come and speak at one of your events as well. So I think there's an aspect of some of these people that. I don't know, maybe you wouldn't have got to speak before because they were busy or they didn't want to fly to where your event was. Suddenly, they're available. And so it's not just about bigger reach with more people looking at your event. It's also you can get more talent. You can be more creative. But that's all we've got time for. Uh, we're now going to go to a break. Don't forget to look on Borella for any meetings because you don't want to be that person who didn't turn up for a meeting, do you? I mean, that's kind of the point of Brella. But all that remains for me is to thank Joanna, Connor, and Christopher. Thank you very much for talking to us about hybrid. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Great to be here. Thanks. Um, well, I've got some great questions actually in the chat, but before we look at that, I'd like to bring on my fellow co-founder, Mike, um, from all the way from Ohio. Mike, you've got a Christmas tree. That's the first one today. I have. Yeah, yeah. We put it up last night um, and I was like, when you you said, do you want to come on for the q and I was like, it's a good thing I put this up. <laughs> Because it looks great. It's it's very nice, very festive. So very very festive. Well, let's go to the poll question first, Liam. If you can bring that onto the screen. Uh, so we asked, when do you think you'll run your next hybrid event? And the winner is Q three. Uh, so interestingly, Q two twenty eight percent. Actually, it's between Q two and Q three, isn't it? So you're basically thinking, at least for the northern hemisphere, that's summer. So kind of April through to what September. Um, what do you think, Mike? Also, 13% have said we just won't run one. Um, I mean, I think the those that say they're not going to run one have probably experienced now virtual. We can see them changing, <laughs> which is which is great. Um, I think they've experienced what the, what the power of virtual is, and they've probably gone, we, we don't really need to anymore. Um, it's interesting. I mean, Q1, Q2's just jumped to the top now over Q3. Um, Q1 is interesting. I think people are so unsure about kind of where COVID will be at that point that they I don't want to see anyone not do an event. Um, but yeah, I think Q1 might still be a little, little risky. Um, well, we've got a question from the audience and it's a good one. So um, Fied Ali Akmal, I hope I pronounced your name right. You always get a Brit butchering names, don't you? These conferences, have you noticed? <laughs> um, everyone. Do you see in-person hybrid conferences narrowing their duration to be a half-day show and spread across multiple days? So this is about fatigue, you know, taking what normally happens for eight or nine hours because we're all in a venue, putting it online. Do people stay engaged? Are they still there? Do you see things changing with hybrid? Oh, I, I think, I mean, yeah, I could see that absolutely happening down to a half day, multiple day event. Um, I mean, we would, we've been talking about this uh, kind of backstage and stuff about how there are elements of an event that are, are going to take a long time to come back. Things like booths that are like actual physical booths where people are going to them and congregating around these places. And as, a, as an attendee at a hybrid event, you're going to be basically sat in a room watching content that is being beamed out to other people online. And so what do those people do in between the breaks? Um, you know, are they on the apps on their phone? Are they on their laptops networking? So I think having the event broken up, maybe it's still a full day, but it's half in the room and then the rest of it takes place as a networking forum online where everyone can disband at the end, uh, like, midday and then go about doing doing their event that way i think that's probably how it will go uh, one of our clients you know we, we, we've been doing these real event producer segments and um they they said that they don't really see, they see hybrid as its own thing they don't see live becoming v virtual and that's your hybrid it's it's it is its own little animal um so we are going to need to think about it differently well, as somebody used to work in digital marketing, it makes sense when you think about everything online. As you say, different formats for different things. Yeah. We've got one final question that I will try and take, and then it's networking time. So the question was, any tips for creating the studio? Do you need to outsource the whole process, or can it be managed internally? 
Uh, I'm going to just take a quick stab at that if I can, Mike. Yeah. Um, YouTube is your friend. So if you're thinking, how do I like myself properly? Um, how do I get a green screen working? You can do it really cheaply on Amazon um, and you know get a good light. I mean, I'm using mostly gaming tech here. Um, you can also talk to somebody who knows what they're doing. But I think when it comes to perhaps proper hybrid events, so where we are on site and we've got three different camera angles and a government minister or somebody important, I wouldn't really suggest you leave it to the gamers <laughs> to do yeah. that. Um, but there's <laughs> definitely um, a lot of information out there. Well, it is also much easier to get this stuff now than it was in February and March where you couldn't get a webcam, you couldn't get a green screen or people were buying them up and selling them back on eBay for like, it was like a PlayStation. <laughs> it's crazy. So now it's much easier to get hold of this stuff and do it. But absolutely, um, you know, get this stuff, try it out and test it. Um, it's totally worth it and a lot of fun. All right, well, we're going to move on to the next section, which is networking. So there's a break uh, now, um, which if I can just find my Brella agenda, there we go. Um, so some of you were asking earlier, can we get hold of the presentations and the videos? The videos, yes, they'll all be put back into the schedule on demand. And as I said before, you just need to tick the past content box, which is top right umbrella on the schedule. Um, you can do that a little bit later on. Um, and then the next session, which is on in about 20 minutes time, is all about online event monetization. And that's with Bo Bruskin and Heather's back. Uh, so we'll hear from Heather then. But for now, check your meetings. Thank you. Thank you.